All right, so hello. Today we're going to be practicing Empire and Greenskins. Greenskins as a counter pick, Empire as the main pick on our quest to uh, what's it to get to get practice in for all of these factions. So if you if you've been paying attention, you've seen been Beastmen, Bretonia, then Dark Elves and Dwarves. Now we finally reached the first third of all the factions. Now, first game for this best of three. Oh man, I forgot my scores. Uh, this first game is up against CP6000. There we go. Uh, I think it's all one. There we go. We've bought a green skin army with some skirmishers, a lot of elite cavalry, and uh, and some goblins to tank some charges. For our opponent, he has some Saurus, Skinks, and a whole lot of monsters. Let's see, his army size is uh, 575, and when you look at this, uh, it seems like probably has some skirmishers. And he does indeed. While I was looking away, they did reveal themselves. And they're going to be putting in a lot of damage onto my own skirmishers, actually taking out three goblin wolf archers. Any more damage would have been quite terrible, as these are my main DPS against the big monsters. My lord is not amazing versus these guys. So, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to really make sure that, uh, that we're careful. Uh, and that we're mostly focusing these guys with skirmishers, surrounding them with our cavalry. We're going to reposition our right flank to get a strong surround here. Moving our skirmishers along the side. Then uh, I guess move up with some goblins to screen out the lizardmen skirmishers. Vindictive glares will be going in on the carnosaur since it seems to have done uh, decent damage at the very least. And we're going to move in our cavalry to... Begin uh, cycle charging infantry. The opportunity prevents it, uh, presents itself. Our savage orcs are taking more damage than they should from these javelins. Big misplay on my part. But uh, this thunderous one is getting a little bit out of position. Perhaps we'll be able to surround it with our cavalry. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be the plan. Big old banishment comes down. We managed to dodge the worst of it. We're also, we've also converged on the Thunderous one now. Our goblins are doing a great job chasing off the skirmishers, and now our cavalry have a choice. They can cycle charge the infantry, or loop around to catch skirmishers. Both options are quite good. Uh, so I think I'm going to split them up actually just to do it. Our cavalry over here is extremely clumped up. Uh, Master Mundy would have been able to AoE them for a ton of damage. He hadn't already cast his AoEs. And we're very thankful that uh, that 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 didn't happen. Uh, what we would have wanted was uh, to cast "Don't Even Try It" to uh, to prevent any any mass deaths there. It looks like a terror route comes down too, and that's that's not the greatest. We're also taking a lot of damage on our cavalry, and our focus fire on these monsters isn't exactly too great. We've sort of split the damage here. Ooh, big uh, spell coming down. Big AoE from Mazda Mundi. We, looks like we do manage to dodge it. And at the moment, we're just on the run. Uh, we've taken huge losses on our cavalry. And... Oh man, it looks like our lord actually is going to get uh, get caught by the thunderous one here and the carnosaur. We'll have to pull in support. And hopefully they'll be able to peel for him. If our Lord routes, uh, this game is almost as good as over. So, it's very important that we keep them safe and that we save these big monsters for the late game where we can surround them with cavalry and shoot them with our skirmishers. This uh, thunderous one is quite threatening. And if we can finish him off, then we should be good. Caval or these are uh, the big monsters continuing to chase my Lord. Uh, not great. We don't have any slows that we can throw on them, but we'll throw down an itchy nuisance. And man, that's a second route from him. One more and he's off the battlefield. So, we're going to have to sacrifice some skirmishers probably, uh, to, to really keep him safe. We 
very much do not want him to get routed again. So these skirmishers are going to have to sacrifice their lives, and that really hurts because of the ammunition loss. But at the very least, a lot of the Queenskin's uh, monsters here finally getting slowed down. Uh, the infantry is getting worn out. And as long as our lord doesn't rout, I think we're good. Ooh, big thunderbolt onto my skirmishers. Does a lot of damage. But it seems like it's, at the very least now, just single entities left for the lizard men. Our lord has built up a decent distance away from these guys. And eventually we'll be able to start getting cavalry in. If he does decide to protect these red crested skinks, it will just buy time for our lord to escape. So it's not the worst situation, but we do get another route on those big guns, and that is quite terrible. However, we do still have a basically full health unit of big guns, and I suspect they'll be able to help us out quite a bit here. Uh, aside from a ton of huge AoEs, they're relatively safe, but still, uh, like I said, we do... <laughs> We do have to worry about those AoEs. As for the Skink Chief, he's just getting chased off. Uh, so not worried over there. And we have a nice setup here where we can... We can potentially take a big fight against these guys. We will bring in our cavalry. Uh, you know what? We're going to hold them back a tiny bit. Just because of how beat up they are. And we're going to try to get our Savage Orcs in on the fight. These troops are moving closer to the edge of the map. Which uh, does mean that, well, first of all, we have more time to cast spells. And second, if they route, they'll be getting off the map. Big problem, though. If my forces route, then I'll also be off the map extremely quickly. They're going to bring in the goblins here to engage the red Cresteds. I think the goblins are as good as dead anyways. So we'll just send them in to, uh, to take the fight. Oh, we try to get our cavalry in position. We want the big guns specifically on top of the big monsters. But I know Mazda Mundi still has a good amount of spells. Uh, definitely quite worrying. But uh, let's see, as long as we don't take too many AoEs, I think we'll be okay. We'll throw down an Itchy Nuisance. Throw down uh, basically all the buffs we can. And we're trying to find a good position for our Lord to get into. Uh, I think fighting the thunderous one is probably what he wants to be doing. Trying to uh, take that out as quickly as possible. Huge spell goes down on my savage orcs. And our lord is going to be pulling back to cycle charge now. Some uh, crown of command to make sure that our troops don't rout. Be very important. And if we can just continue swarming these uh, monsters, I think we'll be okay. They do uh, push through my infantry. This is legal with the new uh, rule set to get onto my lord. But our cavalry does get to move in. Uh, it's just very important that our lord doesn't die here. He takes uh, another hit. Oh, gets routed for the last time and that's effectively dead. However, for the lizard men, they do have... Uh, yeah, the, the lizard men are... Low on infantry, so we have full surrounds here. He doesn't have any AoEs, but uh, we're very prone to terror routes now, which is a huge problem. Uh, we're close to the edge of the map too, but oh man, and his leadership spikes up. Uh, so it looks like our opportunity is likely lost here. But you never know. Uh, it looks like in this case though, it is indeed a loss and GG to our opponent. So a very long rough game. The uh, monsters of the lizard men were a little bit too much for our cavalry there. And that's gonna be GG. I guess uh, throwing our way out our lord was, was pretty rough there. I think if we had kept him out of the fight, our troops might have been able to just win it there. And during the mid game, we had to sacrifice a lot of our archers just to protect uh, the spider. And that was really rough. If we had ammunition in the late game there, we could have just kited out the monsters for the whole game. And that could have won it for us. So, uh, some misplays. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll be more prepared for next time, though. So, for this next game, with CP6000 up one, 
uh, the last game I just forgot to, to update the, the scoreboard to set my score to zero. Uh, so in this best of three, he's playing Chaos, we're playing Empire, and we have a very fun skirmish build here. Looks like uh, his army is mostly infantry focused, so we're feeling extremely confident. Some wolves are coming in, we'll hit them with the grenade launchers, and we're bringing in Franz 2 along with our cavalry. Dogs do take a lot of damage to start off. Franz will be able to terrify them. And there we go, a uh, nice initial engagement. These marauder horsemen are moving in, but we have Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in. We'll be able to hit them rather hard, and uh, we'll, we'll also have to be aware of these dogs on the far side. War wagons will be able to move in. Uh, and Franz, with his buffs, should be able to shut down all of these horsemen here. They are skirmishing away, but we do have some terrifies on them. Should get them off the battlefield, and as for these hounds, we have Knights of the Blazing Sun that'll be able to finish them off. For our mobility here, just continuing to chase the horsemen. And uh, and if we can take care of the hounds, we should be good. And then we'll be moving into the, the later stages of this skirmishing game. Let's see here, my outrider grenade launchers can begin firing away on the mirror guard. That'll slow them down, get some good damage. We've also routed off a unit of uh, horsemen, but we've lost a uni unit of pistoliers ourselves. Uh, Big misplay, I'd say. But nevertheless, uh, we can continue running back. We have a lot of space behind us. And we should be good. Go down a heal on Franz, too. And uh, I guess use him to push away the mirror guard. Nice, he actually didn't chase our pistoliers. So we also manage to uh, bring them back. And if we can chase off this unit of Marauder horsemen, then we should be good to go. Let's see, we'll continue pulling back too. Go down an overcast heal since we have all of our troops grouped up here. And uh, and just keep running for our lives, essentially. Let's see, uh, we can't take an easy infantry engagement here. But we can slow them down a lot with cycle charging from our Knights of the Blazing Sun. Our other horsemen have taken a lot of damage. Uh, and let's see, looks like fireballs are coming onto France. We'll try to dodge that. And nice, it looks like we do manage to do it. Uh, so, our next order of business here are these dragon ogres. They're not great. We definitely uh, don't want to be fighting them. So, pistoliers will be moving in to pressure them while we continue hammering the infantry with the grenade launchers. Our cavalry. Uh, let's see, I guess we'll be cycle charging these chaos marauders. That's a very safe bet, especially now that we've chased off the dragon ogres. Our infantry will continue retreating. Let's see, uh, our war wagons will eventually run out of ammunition. But I think uh, given the current situation, it's still important to leave them on fire at will. Just because getting in as much damage as possible is sort of the priority right now. So just continuing to kite back, using our pistoliers. We'll turn off skirmish mode since I want a little bit more control over them. And once again, grenade launchers will be hitting the mirror guard. So we'll continue cycle charging them with friends too. They can't really, uh, without support, they can't do much to stall friends. Uh, so there's no real threat for him. And, uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, we'll just be able to pull them back. Dragon Ogres too, move into support. And, uh, and they'll just be taking, uh, Pistol Fire and War Wagon Fire. And by pushing those guys up, it does mean that we'll be able to, uh, continue screening these Dragon Ogres away. That gives us opportunities to charge in with our cavalry. That should be able to route off yet more Marauders. All in all, quite good. Franz is still healthy. And as long as you don't get cornered uh, on the edge of the map, feeling quite confident here. War wagons are running out of ammunition, though. So they will likely... Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they'll likely uh, not be able to do too much in just a moment. 
But I think they're paying for themselves, especially since they're firing in on Marauder Horsemen. Speaking of, it looks like they want to engage, but with the threat of frames, we'll be able to, to kite away from them once again. Dragon Ogres looking to be a little bit uh, just a little bit delayed on the defensive positioning. And that means once again, we'll get to punish Chaos by charging in with our cavalry. Pulling away and then using our pistoliers to fire at the Dragon Ogres. This is a standard kite practice. And you do this to make sure that either your cavalry or your skirmishers are getting value. Archeon now moving in a little bit aggressively. He will indeed have to pull back due to the fact that uh, Franz was nearby. And once again, we're going to throw down a big heal onto our injured units. Now we're going to sacrifice a unit of spearmen here to halt the dogs. It means that they'll likely get caught by the chaos infantry. Uh, but it looks like uh, they actually just route off the dogs, and we don't have to worry about that. So that went pretty well. Fire at Will is off on the war wagons. So uh, since they have used up most of their ammunition, the rush from Chaos is a lot less aggressive now. Uh, so we want to be saving ammunition now on them to be as efficient as possible. Because we know even if uh, Chaos does manage to dive in on top of us, that our war wagons will be able... To use up the rest of their ammo. We're going to be focusing on priority targets like these dragon ogres uh, and then that should be good. He looks like another advance from chaos is coming in. We'll position once again for more cycle charges. We can probably take out these chaos marauders by the looks of it. And uh, with the help of friends I believe you'll be able to terror out those guys too. So we're just continuing to pull back, moving in with our pistoliers so that we can stay engaged. It looks like dragon ogres have moved in. So we'll pull away from them, bring our spears to fight them even. And then we'll have friends to uh, pose a pretty nice threat. The infantry will be too slow to support. And that means with all of these buffs, the dragon ogres will be taking a lot of damage. And there we go. They are on the verge of routing. Uh, I didn't check if there was a flame storm or anything. That definitely would have hurt a lot if he had some AoEs to throw in there. But it looks like that wasn't the case. And uh, and we'll be able to, to disengage fairly safely. Well, the horsemen do try to push through. And we do have to sacrifice another unit of spearmen just to hold the line. But it's not without uh, not without uh, not without being useful. Because what they do buy time for is a huge charge from our cavalry. We're able to route off uh, the two Marauder Horsemen units. We do take a big burning head though on our cavalry. But it is cavalry and they are Knights of the Blazing Sun. So they're not as worried about big AoEs. We can safely disengage them now as there isn't really any... Uh, since there's not really any... Uh, not a whole ton of elite troops, or there's not a lot of mobility left for Chaos. Uh, and then we should just be able to run away fairly safely. War Wagons will be focusing on the Dragon Ogres. And now we have a pretty nice situation where Archaeon is getting surrounded. These uh, Chaos Warriors moving in will be getting shelled by the, uh, by the Outrider Grenade Launchers. That should be able to get a lot of damage in. And even though Archaeon is scary, he, uh, he's no might for friends on a cycle charge. So Archaeon will likely be going down here. And a huge flanked uh, grenade launcher volley should really just destroy all of this chaos infantry. A nice uh, stand your ground will help too. We'll heal up our troops. And I think this game is good. I think uh, we've secured a win. We'll even bring in the war wagon to, to begin cycle charging. And uh, even though Archaeon is able to, to hold, we'll just uh, cycle charge him with knights and also cycle charge him with, with friends. The infantry is out of the game. And uh, I think, yep, that is indeed a GG from our opponent. Archaeon falls. And uh, nice. Just uh, it's a pretty clean victory there, I must say. Ooh. So, looking at the value, 
outrider grenade launchers are broken they are they're not broken but uh they are very strong uh when uncontested and as you saw there there weren't any spirit leeches to go out to go down on them and they were able to get the volleys off on the most expensive troops that they could as for the war wagons they used up all of their ammunition and they only just paid for themselves i wasn't being super careful with ammunition usage in the early game so I don't really know how I feel about those guys. If we compare them to the Pistoliers, my Pistoliers sort of did the same amount of work as the War Wagons. Um, yeah, so I feel like just maybe normal Outriders with, uh, with handguns would have done better there. But if my opponent had gone for a more Rush uh, Mobile centric build, I guess the War Wagons are better against things like uh, Chaos Warhounds. Uh, and so yeah, there we go. That's about it. I don't think there's any other numbers you guys are interested in. So we'll move on to the next game. So here we go for the final game. The best of three. Uh, for this best of three against, uh, against CP6000. We are playing as the Tomb Kings. Up against... No, we're playing as High Elves, jeez. <laughs> up against his Tomb Kings. We've brought the usual same old build that we usually... We, that we've been bringing for a while now. Is there a way to mute public chat? Why is it, why is it pinging me? Strange. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so we have the same usual build that we've been bringing uh, up till recently. With masked archers, techless with a net, and some armor debuffs to, to actually be able to do damage to constructs. We have cavalry to support and to fight uh, Nehekara horsemen. And his army is slightly smaller than ours, but we're still expecting a lot of infantry. So we'll have to see how this goes. The Silverin, I expect them to do quite well though against most Tomb King's infantry. As long as we don't get overrun, we should be good. So starting off, it looks like he's gone for a fairly aggressive build. He does indeed have chariots here. And we'll have to see how this goes. We'll bring in our cavalry to support and to stall them out. And we also want Teclis to get in here, try and throw down his nets. There we go. Cavalry or the uh, chariots are getting pretty close. And we're going to net them down. And then uh, and just fire away at them with our archers. Let's see, looks like more cavalry is coming along the side. But our main threat here really are these chariots. So we do manage to take out one. Which means that now we can fully commit to this right flank protection. We'll also throw down a flaming sword so that our archers are able to do more damage. And then uh, these guys will be working away on these uh, skeleton chariots on the side. And as soon as they're down, I'm feeling a lot more confident. Also throw down a fiery convocation to, hit, uh, to try and hit all of these spears here. Move back a tiny bit with our spearmen to make sure that it lands well. And it's gonna be pretty good by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty good. So we do clear out uh, the entire Tomb King's front line. And now it's just clearing up his, uh, his cavalry since the chariots are bogged down and the infantry is gone. There's just some Tomb Guard which don't pose a huge threat to our troops. Uh, so we'll just be, we'll just be dealing with them uh, nice and easy. Let's see here. This is Arkin the Black. Not especially worried about him. There are some sepulchral stalkers coming in though. So we're going to focus fire them with archers too. We don't really need to net them. Just due to the fact that they are relatively uh, relatively slow to maneuver. And with a little bit of archer focus fire, they should go down. And Ushapti summon has gone down. But it is on top of my Lothar and Seaguard. Uh, he likely would have wanted that on top of my archers instead. And uh, because it's Lothar and Seaguard, they're going to be taking a lot less damage. So, current situation, the Stalkers are going down. We have our Archers on guard mode now to make sure that they will be firing for sure. And that's enough to take out the Stalkers. So now we're choosing our next priority target. And that's going to be Arkin the Black. He's getting bogged down in our Seaguard. And a net on top of him should really seal his fate. We'll pull off the archers so that we have line of sight. And there's the net. 
Here is the focus fire. And I think that will likely be game. Ark in the Black already down to half HP. So we send a Spirit Leech on top of Techless, so we pop our potion to negate the damage. And uh, with Ark in the Black down, really there aren't too many other threats on the field for us to deal with. So there we go, army losses. And GG. A swift old victory for us. That was really punishing for the Tomb Kings. Uh, wow, that went so badly. Uh, essentially, we we focus fired down the priority targets. The engagement wasn't uh, it wasn't timed perfectly, which means that we were able to just fire down uh, at the targets as they came in. And uh, even so, he would have needed a much longer flank to actually get on top of my archers. The Silverin were amazing at holding the line. And the Fiery Convocation, killing all the infantry, really was the nail in the coffin there. Uh, after that happened, there wasn't much he could have done there. Just because there weren't enough tools to really shut down my archers. Uh, they were really able to just fire for basically the whole game. Uh, so very rough to our opponent, but well played nonetheless. Now the best of three is over, and since we do have a tournament coming up later today, we are going to be switching to quick battles from here on out until tomorrow. Playing up against the dwarves as the greenskins, and we fought a lot of defenses against gyrocopters. In this case, our opponent uh, looks to have opted not for gyros, and instead seems to be focusing mostly on uh, some cannons, some thunderers, and uh, yeah, you know, a very uh, traditional dwarf defensive formation build. So our rock lobbers, take a look at the range of the cannons. Our rock lobbers will not be able to outrange them, but they don't really want to be firing in on the cannons anyways. They want to be hitting uh, infantry. So while the cannons fire away on the rock lobbers, we should be able to, uh, to hit up the cannons. Our infantry are going to progress along the right hand side. And we're doing that so that we can secure a, uh, a strong flank against our opponent. So there we go, that's going to be the plan. Dwarf warriors are just going to be eating the first wave of rocks while the... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're going to be eating the first wave of rocks while... Uh, and then while they reload, our rock lobbers will be moving up to hit the thunderers. Meanwhile, while this happens, it's going to be advancing with our infantry as quickly as we can so that we can get into this flank. We have a huge mobility force on the left side too, so if he does reposition his infantry, we expect to be able to push through with these guys and shut down all of these thunderers. So there's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Our rock lobbers will be able to fire their first few shots. Cannons will be doing their nasty, nasty work. And it's just going to be continuing progressing with these rock lobbers. Now I did say our skirmishers wouldn't be as useful in this situation due to the fact that there are indeed uh or just, just because of the high armor for dwarves. But in this case, there's actually a lot of slayers. Which means that they'll be able to fire in on them. And that's going to be their job. Uh, just putting in as much damage onto the slayers as possible. So we're just continuing to move in with this uh, heavy flank uh, maneuver with our infantry. We'll have to make sure that the cannons don't turn and fire lengthwise into the orcs. It looks like that's what's going to happen. Uh, I think at this point we've pivoted enough where we're not too worried about that. Oh, and it looks like the cannons are actually firing on an Azag instead. So we'll have to dodge with him. It looks like a spell's gone down on him too. Marked by Ulthar. The Ulthar's raiders here also. Uh, but what this actually does for us is we're buying a lot of time. Our rock lobbers are able to just uh, fire away freely. And... As long as uh, these cannons are trying to fire in on Azag, Rock Lobbers will be able to take out these priority targets. Uh, yeah, like uh, like the Thunderers. So that's working out pretty well. And we don't even have to advance. Our opponent is sort of uh, stuck here. 
trying to trying to uh, get value in with his cannons, but I think we're trading up into him as long as the Vokalabros continue to fire. At this point, our skirmishers can now move up, and they're going to be firing in on the Slayers, with a big ol' purple sun coming down on the Thunderers if they decide to defend. Our two cavalry units will be punishing the Thunderers too, and even though our Black Orcs are taking some damage, it takes a surprisingly long amount of time for artillery to actually uh, deal with that. The Thunderers have begun firing away. We've thrown down the Purple Sun. And now we just see if uh, if it's going to take them out. Looks like my opponent does dodge in time. Uh, but we still do a lot of damage there. Meanwhile, our Skirmishers are getting in value. And uh, more importantly, our Rock Lovers too are doing amazingly. The Thunderers are on the verge of routing too, so I think a charge should be able to finish them off, and if not, we'll simply disengage with these Squig Hoppers, and, uh, and then we'll be good. Disengaging with them now. Looks like a unit of Slayers has begun moving up to deal with our artillery, and what we'll be doing there is uh, we'll actually just be bringing in our Skirmishers to shoot them to death. The Skirmishers will be able to, uh, as long as they get there in time, they'll be able to collapse in onto, onto the Slayers. And that'll be a very bad trade for my opponent, even if he does manage to catch a Rock Lobber. So we're feeling good there. We can start advancing with our Goblins too. And we just have to make sure we don't get hit by those Miners with Blasting Charges too hard. See, our Cavalry has taken a pretty good amount of damage. Not great, but uh, it does look like we are able to... It does look like we will be able to start collapsing in onto this infantry here. Uh, he's actually gone pretty spread out. And uh, even though he will get some blasting charges onto my... Onto my goblins, I think we're still good. Yep, we do get a nice engage there. We can move in with the black orcs. Move in with our fanatics. His forces are extremely spread out now. And uh, we'll be able to punish that with our mobility. Big volley of blasting charges comes down onto my black orcs, but they are very highly armored. And they're not worried about a few blasting charges, so they're good there. The slayers are looking to take out my rock lobbers, though. A little bit unfortunate, but we're making up for it just by collapsing this uh, dwarven flank. See, the Slayers will be able to hit with Fanatics. Looks like they're going to be out of the picture. Uh, but Azag is taking a lot of damage. Uh, not great. But uh, I guess if we just start dodging with him, then we should be fine. A Purple Sun. Take out a few Miners. Actually, very inefficient there. We didn't take out too many Miners. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're really just focusing on Azag. Trying to make sure he doesn't die to the Artillery here. That would be rather unfortunate. Looks like that may be the case, nevertheless. Because uh, my dodging is not uh, fully on point with him. So we'll have to see if we can make... Uh, if we can get him to safety here. That's actually really bad that he is so low. His leadership is so important for the greenskins. So he'll be moving up. Dodging. As hard as he can. Oh, and he does get routed. Which means that we can no longer dodge with him. Uh, let's see here. Our rock lobbers are still low. Azag. Oh no, he's taking so much damage from that artillery. Real unfortunate. We still have black orcs moving in though. We still have our archers and our rock lobbers. Let's see, these slayers are almost finally dealt with. Uh, looks like that advance towards my rock lobbers was actually very well played by my opponent. And uh, it's punish punishing me quite hard. Let's see, uh, very nearly dead though, just uh, three models left. Azag has reached a safe position on the map, but now it's important to see if he actually rallies or not. It looks like he does, and he's going to be staying there until there is no more range left from the dwarves. Uh, yeah, because there is, he's going to be dying immediately. So uh, at this point, it's just a slow push with our black orcs. We have uh, unfortunately lost many of the fanatics, just uh, due to some misplays on my part, leaving them to die. Uh, so, not great there. But 
our black orcs are uh, still healthy enough to cause a lot of havoc in the dwarven backline. Not to mention we have skirmishers, we have a little bit of cavalry left, and in the late game, Azag should be able to do okay. Skirmishers have, uh, have met the front line of the dwarves, and we need to try to find a way to engage uh, properly here. Shutting down the Thunderers will be very important. And if we can get these Black Orcs in on the fight, uh, that's uh, that's the key to victory, I think. Oh, wow. Balance of power is looking really bad in our favor. Oh, man. That's uh, that's terrible. So we might not even hit army losses early here. See, we're moving in with our Skirmishers. And we have our Rock Lobbers online. Uh, it's just if we hit army losses, that would be very unfortunate. I think we could still probably pull this through. Uh, maybe with the rock lobbers, but there's a lot of slayers too, so I wouldn't be surprised if if we just got the loss straight up here. Let's see here. We do lose our skirmishers. The black orcs are still fighting. Rock lobbers are firing away, but nearly out of ammunition. Let's see. Dwarf warriors are moving in. Black orcs are still doing okay. Uh, we'll have to really see how this goes. Losing Azag was really uh, a huge loss, though. I really wish I hadn't had him uh, take so many artillery shots. Because, uh, yeah, we really do need him for that balance of power. Looks like we're still just barely sticking in with it. Uh, there are quite a few Slayers left, though, and ranged for the Dwarves. And that's going to be GG. Oh, man. Rough. Rough. I think if we had... For one, the Slayers that advance towards my uh, my Rock Lobbers. If we left a unit of Goblins there, then we would have been able to uh, we would have been able to hold that really well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if we if we left a unit of Goblins, we could have just held off the Slayers, and we would have saved our Rock Lobbers. Uh, from there, it would have just been shelling out the Dwarves. Until uh, until they get a ton of value. In this case, they only they didn't even pay for themselves. As for the Black Orcs, I think they did okay, not amazingly. Uh, if I had just gone for a full out Black Orc rush, I think we would have actually just won it there. Uh, but yeah, yeah, probably wanted more cavalry too. And I definitely had uh, was mainly focusing on gyrocopter cheese instead of. Uh, a more traditional build. So GG, I think in the future. Uh, yeah, if I covered those misplays and probably uh, took a little bit more cavalry. I think we would have been okay. See, the Slayers were actually really hard to deal with. Or alternatively, we also have a few other green skin builds to test. So with that out of the way, we'll be moving to the next game. So for the last quick battle game of today before we head into the tournament. We have a game versus Lizardmen playing as the Empire and bought a little bit of a strange build today. The heavy focus on trying to kill off the infantry so that our guns and spearmen are free to kill off all the monsters. Cavalry will be dealt with using Hellblasters and, uh, and Marcus with his nets will make sure that we are really able to deal with uh with yeah with any monstrous units now skink skirmishers of course are a threat and it looks like uh yes yes they are indeed a huge pain to deal with they actually get in a lot of damage onto my outriders take uh, a few model losses but they're still alive still holding on and a big volley should be able to punish these skinks too so some trading here and there and now we can uh, simply disengage. We're going to rotate our Huntsmen so that they're uh, further away from these Horned Ones. And uh, and we're back to trying to clear out the infantry here. Moving in, trying to hit the Saurus Warriors. The cavalry is coming in, but the Hellblasters are firing away. Uh, and we're, we're getting a little bit worried now. There's actually still a lot of infantry left for the Lizardmen. I would have thought that my Outriders were, would have been able to deal with them. But the Counter Skirmish uh, looks to be getting its work done. Not to mention the Solar Engine is hurting quite a bit too. And I think a Manticore Summon's coming in? We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, our Artillery is still doing great though, actually hitting uh, the Source Old Blood for quite a bit. 
And the frontline engagement is getting underway. We have some skinks moving in. Outriders will still be able to do great first them. Uh, let's see. Oh dear. These uh, horned ones are moving in too. But we've just barely get the net. And we're going to focus this lord now. Uh, so that's going to be the plan. Move in these halberdiers to hold for our hell blasters. And our huntsmen will be firing in on the cavalry. Let's see, it looks like uh it looks like our net here was not enough to actually to actually win out the situation, and that is that is quite bad. Uh looks like shooting the horned one was a terrible decision. He is shielded, which is likely what managed to keep him uh to keep him going. And now he's hunting down Marcus. Marcus getting uh ping-ponged about. But at the very least, we have our archers here to support. And uh, we have our Outriders, too. We'll be able to move in and screen some damage off of Marcus. We definitely don't want him to die. Uh, and then after that, it's just worrying about our front line. But, uh, all in all, I'd say things are looking uh, not optimal. We'll have to see. Oh, man. Focus firing. This guy was the worst idea ever. The cavalry is engaging in on me now. And, uh, and our front line is collapsing. So it looks like our crazy build for today. Oh, man, definitely not working. Absolutely terrible build, I gotta say. So, uh, you know, an experiment... Uh, 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 <laughs> an experiment failed, but some lessons learned. So it turns out, Outrider with grenade launchers are not good at clearing out Saurus uh, if they're being supported at all. The counter skirmish, the honestly minimal amount of counter skirmish from my opponent really really punished the fact that i had so many outriders and they weren't able to get their value in uh, after that my huntsmen uh really could not deal with these uh horned ones and it looks like they were shielded too i think uh no no maybe not no 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 they weren't i'm not sure uh but his cavalry nonetheless were able to push in uh my artillery wasn't able to deal with them so my proposed counters Sadly, uh, we're not actually doing the work in countering. Uh, showing once and for all that it is more important to take a mixed empire build rather than going all in on their guns. However tempting it may be. All right, so I think that's it for... So, this game against the Wood Elves, we're playing as the Greenskins, and he has a very small army. So... This means that it's going to be uh, some big old blobby action, probably with Orion, which is why we've decided to bring Vindictive Glare with us today. It will be... Oh! Looks like he's actually going for a kite build instead. Very interesting. So, we do have our skirmishers to catch him out if needed. And let's see, uh, we also have a ton of shielded troops. Uh, actually, pretty insane amount of shielded troops. So, if it is Waywatchers... We're pretty happy. Uh, it looks like, okay. He is opting for uh, for a camp in the forest instead. We don't really need the rock lobber here, so we're, we're okay just advancing. And uh, that's going to be the plan. Sisters of Twilight will be uh, a nuisance. But we can hit them with Vindictive Glares. And even though it's not uh, extremely uh, efficient, since they do have their healing... Uh, I imagine they'll be getting heal capped by Ariel, so any damage we do now should be permanent. Our skirmishers too can uh, now push up onto the Sisters of Twilight, and it's going to be a slow advance onto his infantry. Some deep wood scouts have also revealed themselves in the forest. Guy taking a uh, heavy advantage of the forest map by the looks of it, and. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be pushing up towards these guys. He also doesn't have Orion, which means that we're very much able to take a strong fight against them. And it's, if it's just a few skirmishers, we're really not worried at this point. We can just uh, simply push up on towards him and be just fine. This is a twilight. We'll be getting slowed down so that the skirmishers can really put a, a hurting on them. They'll barely be able to dodge since we're camping directly underneath. And if we can get them to route off the map, that would just be uh, simply amazing. It'll be a huge leadership debuff for the Wood Elves. And from there, a pretty simple win. They'll throw down a Vindictive Glare. 
make sure that happens a little bit faster. Actually, uh, looks like we don't need it as they do get routed. And we're going to be chasing them off the map now. Deepwood Scouts will be chased by our trolls. And uh, looks like our catapult too can actually start hitting the dryads. So overall, things are looking quite amazing. Ariel is not especially scary. Just because we do have Grom here. He'll be able to pop his buffs. And she's going to be taking a lot of damage. Even if she does throw down a ton of spells here. The stone trolls have high enough HP. Where she's not exactly... Uh, where she can't, she can't really get them to route. There is a problem though. Sylvan Knights with their uh, extremely high HP. And our low amounts of magic damage could pose some problems here. Uh, we actually forgot to bring a lot of magic damage versus these guys. Uh, but at the very least, we have Vindictive Glare. And that's what we're going to be using to poke them down. Our Skirmishers, too, are great versus, uh, great versus them, since they are unarmored. So we'll be pushing them in and, uh, and trying to deal with them that way. Move in our Orc Boys to engage, slow them down, and as soon as Ariel is down... I think we should just be fine. Oh, looks like we did uh, get a few of our skirmishers hit by by the Sylvan Knights. Bit of a misplay, but I think we're still good. Let's uh, continue firing in on them. And uh, we can even turn on skirmish mode just to make things a little bit easier for us to control. As for the front line, it looks like there is a tree man. Uh, he's a pretty big threat and we'll be needing to use Grom to, uh, to make sure that we actually take him down. We have Savage Orcs too. Uh, so that, that's actually a pretty good option. We'll send them in. And they'll be able uh, to chop them up with their AP. Sylvan Knights caught up on my uh, Orc Boys. Is great. And the Stone Trolls are going to be aiming for the Wild Wood Rangers. It looks like the Sylvan Knights are trying to, uh, to continue moving up. But... They shouldn't be able to get too much value at this point. Even though they are extremely tanky, this is a really bad situation for them. Stone Trolls can now move in. And we can chase off these uh, Deepwood Scouts too. With our Goblins. Some buffs from Grom also. Will uh, make a huge impact. And he can actually fight off the Tree Man too. So we'll send him in there. And now it's simply collapsing in onto the Deep Wood Scouts, which is the main advantage for the Wood Elves. And trying to finish off this Tree Man. The Sylvan Knights are still as good as dead, but they, this really shows why it's important to take magic damage, even though we've been firing in on them for basically the whole game. They've been able to just uh, stay alive for a very long time. Bomb 2, taking a lot of damage from the Tree Man, we'll need to pull him back since his armor... Uh, or no, no. So we'll just need to pull him back. And when we cycle charge back in with him, we can sunder the armor of the tree man uh, pretty easily. If we take out the infantry too, that should make things easier. That's going to be the plan. Deepwood scouts have been shut down. And uh, let's see, it means our rock lopper doesn't really have too many targets. But we'll still fire them onto the deepwood scouts. Uh, oh, nice. We have a wah too. And let's see, if we can get Grom onto the Tree Man and debuff his armor, then that means we'll be able to get in a lot of damage combined with the wall. There we go, he does get in. We'll proc his uh, damage resist buff too. Then we should be good. Uh, meanwhile in the back, Sylvan Knights. Being, being Sylvan Knights, they've been getting uh, shot at by archers for basically the whole game now. And yeah, I really should have brought more magic damage, but a good lesson. Uh, meanwhile, Grom looks like he's successfully uh, dealt with the tree man. Uh, so uh, we should be good there. Uh, only problem though, Sylvan Knights are still alive. These deep wood scouts are going to be rather hard to catch. Um, but the main forces here of the Wood Elves is getting shut down. So the hope is we will be able to push them into army losses. And now that the goblins are out of ammunition, we can also bring them in to start chasing off the Deep Wood Scouts. So that's the plan. Bomb will be cycle charging, same with the Stone Trolls. And we'll continue firing away Vindictive Glares onto the Sylvan Knights. 
will also throw in a Gorkle Fix-It to negate their charge bonus. And then we'll be hitting them with the Stone Trolls. That should be able to take care of them. And it should be army losses for the Wood Elves now. Another buff from Grom, anti-large bonus. Will do amazing in this situation. And I think that is indeed GG. Unless he has uh, some unbreakable units somewhere. Looks like, uh, well, we'll have to see. Silver Knights are down, Tree Man is gone. And, uh, yeah, I think we did it. Nice. So, uh, there we go. A, uh, a nice, nice smooth game. Uh, but I do think it is very important that we, that we take magic damage next time. Uh, an Orc Shaman would be able to fill that slot. And uh, I'm not sure if any Orc Infantry has it, or Greenskin Infantry has magic damage. So we'll probably need to uh, take a few more lores of magic to cover there. As for the army, the Shielded Infantry was great versus the Deepwood Scouts. Even though they used up all their ammunition, they never paid for themselves. And uh, Grom is... Jeez, Grom did a lot of damage. Uh, he, he is, I think, the most meta pick versus Wood Elves. Uh, just because of his regen and how hard to kill he is. This is a Twilight 2, not too annoying. Uh, since we used our skirmishers effectively against them. So there we go. Uh, I did say it was the last game last time. But this time it really is the last game. Because now we have to move on to the tournament.